Okay, so today we're we're introducing Dr. Tanu Rao, who is a consultant over at Liverpool Hospital. Uh, she's an amazing gynecologist and really passionate. So it's a pleasure to have you here uh, to talk about hysteroscopies. So you'll go, go. <laughs> hey, thanks, Rosie. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, like you mentioned, I love teaching. So here we go. All right, I'll just dive straight into the topic. Um, what I've done is compiled a series of videos because anybody who knows me um, will know that I'm all about surgical videos. Um, and I do think in this era, it's just um, easier to um, see and figure it out rather than, you know, some monotonous um, uh, lecture of sort. Okay. Uh, feel free to stop me at any point if you have any questions, or I guess we can take them all in the end as well. Okay. Uh, let's have a look. How do we? Oh, there we go. All right. So today we are just going to discuss the basics of hysteroscopy um, and practical tips. Um, of course, this is like you know a huge topic, and um, many of our endoscopy conferences have so many sessions dedicated just to this. Uh, but but what I'm aiming to do is. Um, give you a really condensed version, okay, uh, for a registrar, what's needed and what's going to help out in theatre, okay? So it's, it's all about practical tips for today. Uh, like you mentioned, I'm at Liverpool. Um, so when, when do we use hysteroscopy? So usually to detect or treat endometrial pathology. Uh, it can range from any age group, okay? So um, um, even you know, young kids um, say they have um, labial adhesions or they have malarian anomalies and you have to figure that out. Um, and then you go on to adolescents, um, uh, you know, where they have uh, abnormal bleeding or they have structural abnormality like a septum. Then you go on to um, the reproductive age group for, again, heavy bleeding, um, polyps, fibroids, infertility. And then the most important group is the postmenopausal group where you really have to uh, objectively prove that there is no uh, precancerous or cancerous lesions. Okay. So anything uh, to do uh, inside the uterus. Okay. So endometrial pathology and sometimes even the vagina, uh, we can use this. All right. So I did uh, a recording in theater um, just to show you all the instruments that my tray would consist for a hysteroscopy. I'm just going to play this out um, and let me know if you can hear this so, well. I'm Sarah Shingham. I'm Karen. We're here to demonstrate the basics of hysteroscopy. So we're just going to quickly show you all the instruments in the hysteroscopy tray, which is a must, starting with a sim speculum. We have a vulsalum to grasp the cervix. We have a wide range of uh, Hegar's dilators, starting from size four over here, which is used to dilate the cervix in case you have a bit of difficulty. Following which, these are called uterine curates. They have a bit of a sharp edge to it, and they um, take endometrial biopsy, or they're used in DNCs. Different sizes, small, medium, and then we have the large. This is called the uterine sound, where we actually measure the size of the uterus, to come a bit closer, you will be able to see the um, graduations or the gradings over here. So it starts from four, five, six, seven. Gives us the total uterus cervical length. Now coming to hysteroscopy, this is a simple hysteroscopy where we have um, uh, three parts. So this is the telescope or the lens through which we are able to see. And then you have an inner sheet, which all you have to do is just click it in. Okay. And the last thing is the outer sheet. So that goes straight inside like this. And then you click this button over here and then fix it. Okay. So it fixed like a locking key. So now you can see there are two other things that have appeared. So one is the inflow and the other one is the outflow scan. In case you get confused, there are clear markings over here. So you can see there's this arrow that goes inwards. So that's for the inflow channel which gets connected like this. And then you have a marking for the outflow channel over here, which goes out. So this is your outflow tube that then gets connected to the um, suction canister outside. So the entire setup of hysteroscopy should just look like this. The last thing is your actual camera. Okay, so that goes and gets connected over here. So you just click it this way and then connect it and then that's done. And then you can turn it around. And then of course, for any procedure, you will need light. So this is our light source. 
over here, sorry. Okay, so this goes and then gets connected to this groove over here. All right. So this is the final uh, setup of the hysteroscope. Light lead, um, the camera system over here, the inflow channel, the outflow channel, and the actual hysteroscope when it's all set up. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so that just explained um, the entire setup of a hysteroscope. So um, usually the nurses do it, uh, but I think it would be good for you to know, um, you know, what, how do you set it up in case there's um, some troubleshooting to be done. It's always good to know your instruments, um, just like a carpenter knows his or her uh, tools. It's, it's the same thing. Okay, I have to thank uh, my anesthetist Shobna for recording all of this and putting up with this. <laughs> there we go. Sorry. Okay. Um, now the next thing is um, how to do the hysteroscopy. Okay. There are two ways to do it. You can use um, uh, vagina, um, vaginoscopy to uh, just use um, the same instrument into the vagina and um, have a look and then gain access to the um, uterus. Or you can straight away go ahead and put the hysteroscopy into the cervix and then start the process. Okay. So we'll just see what this um, shows. A bit of animation. Uh, I'm a firm believer of um, hydrodilation. Um, so uh, I, I even when you have you know uh, stenotic services or um, tough cases, I, I would say patients pace. So um, rather than using uh, instruments to dilate dramatically, uh, just use persistence and the pressure that your uh, uh, hysteroscope provides um, just to dilate the um, cervix. So this is a vaginoscopy. So we're going um, into the vagina. It's it's really easy. Sometimes, um, you know, when I was young, I, I would think that, oh, you know, would, would all the water leak out? But actually, really, nothing's to be done. Um, you just insert the hysteroscope and the vagina just distends with the water. I go straight down posteriorly and then bring the hysteroscope on top and um, during that process I tend to see the cervix. So now I've seen the cervix and we've gone inside okay so this is part of the cervix. This was a case of a postmenopausal woman uh, who had um, uh, bleeding and we had to rule out um, uh, thickened endometrium and um, a precancerous or a cancerous lesion. As you can see it's quite stenotic the cervix and this is you know, sometimes it is a common finding in postmenopause, um, and and there are various ways to, I guess, um, uh, tackle this. And and I'll save that for another day. Uh, the nuances of uh, hysteroscopy, um, including fluid management, and you know all the others which I haven't included today. So as you can see, just persistence. Okay, so just stay over there. Use gentle corkscrew movements of your hysteroscope and then gently guide yourself um, the hysteroscope in. And, you know, that's it. That's easy access. Okay, So most of the services you will be able to negotiate just with this trick alone. Um, I usually go straight to the fundus, refocus, and then come back. Um, and I've seen both the ostia, so that's just the opening of the tubes over there. And then you just pan back and have an overall, overall um, look or a survey of the entire endometrium. This is classic appearance of um, an atrophic endometrium. Okay, So most likely in her case, it was probably atrophic vaginitis um, causing um, uh, PV bleeding, which is the number one cause of PV bleeding in a postmenopausal woman. All right. Um, so that was that. But sometimes you can actually find something inside the uterus. And this is um, a video showing operative hysteroscopy. OK. Um, I think the slide showing details should just come up in a minute. So there we go. So it's a 40 year old. She underwent a um, termination at 16 weeks or so. And then she had this persistent PV bleeding. And as you can see on the ultrasound, there was this hypoechogenic mass with mixed echogenicity, to be honest. Um, so we said, you know, let's just have a look ourselves. So we did a hysteroscopy, we found something. And now, right now, I'm using an operative hysteroscope, which is called um, uh, a tissue ec extracting device, okay? Uh, I'm not going to take names, uh, just to be uh, politically correct, but there is an instrument that can um, take away the tissue um, and has a containment system so that it doesn't flood your operating uh, field. And it, this is very useful because in the past, um, we had older generations where you would probably use a resectoscope, okay? Where yes, it does the trick, it takes out the tissue, but then leaves the tissue still swirling over there. So then you have to take the entire stroscope out, you know, grab out the tissue, then, you know, get back in. Uh, instead, I think this is um, an improvement uh, for 
all of us, uh, where we get to stay in one spot, you know, take out all the tissue uh, without it obscuring the peel. So you can see that um, this is a huge uh, polypoid growth of sort. And uh, I'm just using this resection system um, all over. It was quite big, to be honest, around five centimeters or so. So we did take some time, um, at least half an hour, 40 minutes. And it's very mindful in these kind of procedures to be aware of your fluid deficit. And so there are various containment systems that tell you exactly how much fluid is lost. The goal is, um, you know, a lot of fluid shouldn't be retained in the woman herself because then there's a risk of pulmonary edema and increased morbidity of sauce, okay? Uh, there are different cutoffs for different fluid um, uh, that you use. I've used normal saline over here. Uh, in certain operating systems, you might have to use glycine as well. So these are the two operating uh, fluids that we use in hysteroscopy. And there are different um, deficits um, based on um, the fluid use, whether the patient is healthy or not, and um, a few other factors, okay? So yeah, almost, I think 60 to 70% of the resection is done. Uh, but yeah, it's like, you know, slowly hacking away at this um, uh, piece of wood. Um, but, but at the end, uh, when you see an empty cavity, it does give you a sense of uh, work satisfaction, at least for me. Um, so when you become a gynecologist, you will have that too. <laughs> so come over and join us. There we go. So that's it. I often see certain um, similar scenarios even after termination at say six or eight weeks and ultrasound is not quite diagnostic um, regarding retained products. Um, I always say just go in and have a look, okay? Because you do run the risk of endometritis, infertility and whatnot. A simple look and treat at the same setting would be great um, for diagnosis and uh, prevention of uh, complications as such. So almost towards the end, And the histopathology of this particular patient actually came back as all dead necrotic tissue, uh, which, which frankly has been ignored for quite some time. Um, so I think it was a good call to go in and just take it all out. So key points, uh, at least from this case, will be when somebody says, you know, persistent abnormal bleeding, please work her up, okay? So the basic we all can do is just get an ultrasound, isn't it? Um, we can just figure out, is there something in the uterus or not? It's an excellent screening tool. Um, and, and then I guess do the uh, required referrals if needed. So we're getting there, patience. <laughs> Almost towards the end. So I always think this is like Pac-Man. I don't know whether you guys are from that generation or not, but I used to play Pac-Man as a kid. And um, it's, it's just like, you know, if you used to eat all the dots, I, I feel like this um, tissue retract, um, this tissue retrieval system, you know, just eats up all the tissue and just takes it away. So yeah, if you're good with video games, they say that um, your endoscopy skills are also good. So who knows? <laughs> Gamers should get into this as well. Oh, geez, okay, that's quite a bit. Right. I'll just drag it uh, towards the end. Sorry, I don't have the patient's notes. Okay, so that's that's the final picture. Okay, so uh, the cavity was almost empty. Okay, so all of this, um, this is as much as we could restore the normal anatomy. And, and um, you know, that, that was it for her. All right. Um, so look, um, these were the uh, videos that I had to share and um, essentially look, a hysteroscopy is a great tool, is what I feel. I would never hesitate um, to offer a hysteroscopy if needed. Um, I, I, I am aware that there are a few other outpatient ways that you can um, sample the endometrium. Okay, So you can just do an endometrial uh, pebbles biopsy, which, um, which can be done in certain cases. Uh, you just have to pick and choose because um, whatever said and done, the gold standard um, is to actually visualize the endometrium for yourself and take hysteroscopic guided samples. I do have um, examples where, you know, the pipels has come back as simple hypoplasia, and then you go and do a hysteroscopic guided biopsy, and then you just pick up the cancer in it. Um, what was the, uh, I think, yeah, that's, that's about it. Um, 
If you want to see more such videos and if you uh, want to learn more about laparoscopy, please don't hesitate to scan the QR code. Um, I, I do release uh, educational videos. And um, you know, if you have any questions, anything at all, you know, shoot it back to us. Uh, I think Verity will help facilitate um, that for us, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Can't thank you enough, Dr. Rao. You're amazing. And it's such a pleasure to have you talk and share your passion. Uh, and I can definitely say that you will answer questions and very enthusiastically. So feel free to send through a message and we'll get make sure it comes through to Dr. Rao. Thank you. Anna, thank you for having me. Bye-bye. <laughs>